Good evening, everyone. My name is Atania, and my teammates, Fabian, Sane, Akila, and Andre, and I have put together a presentation on the SurfQual model, which is a very important tool in customer relationship management. So, customer service is primarily a function of perception, customer expectation, and the service that was actually provided to them. What this means is that each customer have their own expectation and perception of what customer service actually entails. If the service provided meet the customer's expectation, then the customer would be satisfied. On the other hand, if the expectation was not met, the customer will be dissatisfied, which means that there is a gap between customer service and the service quality. A gap means that there is a difference between what the customer expected and their perception of the service that they actually received. So managers in the service sector are under increased pressure to demonstrate that their service is more customer focused or customer centric and that continuous performance improvement is being delivered. While there has been efforts to study service quality, there has been no general agreement on the measure of the concept. The majority of the work today has attempted to use the SurfQual method methodology in an effort to measure quality. The SurfQual model was implemented by American marketing gurus Zetham, Zetham, Parasuraman, and Berry in 1988. The model was designed to capture customer expectations and perception of a service along with the dimensions that they believe to represent service quality. The model consists of eight components and a total of seven quality gaps. So this is a diagram of what the model actually looks like. So in the center of the model are the yellow squares. You will see the management's role or the management's responsibility to the model. And then on the outer parts or in the blue rectangles, you will see the customer's responsibility or the customer's role. So the model starts with the customer's needs and expectation as with any other business model or customer relative, um, related model. So that transitions to the management's definition of what those needs are, which translates into the design slash delivery specification. Then we have the expectation of the design slash delivery specification, which transitions to both the advertising and sale promises and also the customer's expectation of the service execution. That transitions to the final stage in the model, which is the customer's expectations. Sorry, the customer's ex sorry, the customer's experience relative to the expectation and the advertising and sale promises transitions to the customer's interpretation of communication. So the customer's needs and expectation determines the customer's experience relative to the expectation. And obviously this has to do with basically how management chooses to attempt to satisfy the customer's needs. And then the customer's interpretation of communication basically is dependent on the customer's needs and expectation. So in the model, you will see different arrows leading to different sections of the model, which kind of explain a step-by-step -step version of how the model works and basically how we get from the customer's needs and expectation to the final stage, which is the customer's experience relative to expectation. So as stated earlier, the model also has seven different gaps, which basically falls between each different, each stage of the model. We are now going to be looking at each gap individually, starting with gap number one, which is the knowledge gap. So the first gap, which is the knowledge gap, is the difference between the customer's needs and expectation and the manager's definition of what those needs and expectations are. 
So the knowledge gap occurs from managers not knowing what customers expect. This gap occurs as a result of lack of communication between managers and customers, poor communication between the frontline staff and the managers, and insufficient marketing research along with focus on transitions rather than transactions rather than relationship and lack of market segmentation. The second gap, that's gap number two, is the standard gap, which is the difference between management's definition of the customer's needs and translation into design slash delivery specification. Not selecting the right service design or standard result in the standard gap. The main reason for the standards gap are poor service design, failure to connect service design to service positioning, unsystematic new service development process, and not focusing on the customer's requirements. A perfect example of this is a restaurant manager may understand that customers expect to be served within 20 minutes of ordering their meal, but they may not have the, the correct resources or the appropriate amount of staff to ensure that this need is met within a timely manner. So that would be an example of the standards gap. The third gap or gap number three is the delivery gap, which is the difference between the service delivery policies and standards and the actual delivery of the service. So this occurs when the organization offer goods or services that is different from what the customer expected. Reason for this gap is inefficient recruitment, lack of empowerment, perceived control and teamwork, role ambiguity or role conflict, inappropriate evaluation and compensation system, and failure to match supply and demand. That brings us to gap number four, which is the internal communications gap. This gap reflects the difference between the level of service promised and the level of service that was actually received by the customer. So customer expectations are shaped by a range of communications, including promotional advertising, website copy and photographs and statements by statements made by the company's representatives. So reasons for the communication gap. The gap arises when these assumed expectations are not fulfilled at the time of delivery of the service. Overpromising and underdelivering, differences in policies and procedures across branches if the company or the organization has many branches, and not managing customer expectation through all forms of communication. An example of this would be if a hotel advertises on its website that it has clean room with updated furniture. However, once customers actually get to the hotel, they realize that the hotel is poorly maintained and the furniture are outdated. This brings us to the fifth gap, which is the perception gap. And that is the difference between the customer's expectations and perception of the level of service received. The customer's expectation is influenced by a range of factors, including personal experience and needs advertising and word of mouth. Reason for this gap, so this gap occurs um, from issues between gap number one and four and is reflected by an error in judgment of the service received. So in a bid to close gap five, we need to ensure that basically gap one to four are on point. So we need to ensure that we close gap one to four so we can close gap number five. We now move on to gap number six, which is the interpretation gap. And that is the difference between the customer's expectation and the employee's perception. This is as a result of the differences in the customer's expectation by the frontline workers. 
So causes of this gap, the expectations from ad were seen can cause this gap as performance being occurred as performance being offered does not match the promises by the company not managing customers expectations through all forms of communication over promises in promotion over promising in promotion not adequately educating customers and the customers do not always understand what the service has done for or to them so the seventh and most important or most critical gap is the service gap. So the service gap is the difference between the customers, difference between what the customers expect to receive and the perception of the service that was delivered. So reason for this gap, this gap is influenced strongly by the previous six gaps. So it is important that the company works on closing the six gap if they expect to close gap number seven. So organizations, organizations have poor human resource policies and lack of cohesive team and the inability to deliver on the promise or the services that were offered. So in conclusion, the concept of measuring the difference between expectation and perception in the form of the surf call, surf call gap score proved very useful in assessing the level of service quality. Managers have used the seven service quality gap model to monitor service delivery and identify possible gaps in their service level. The aim is to take Sorry, the aim is so they can take the necessary steps to close these gaps, which would ultimately improve customer service and push the company into a more customer serve, uh, customer centric or customer focused direction. So that concludes our presentation for tonight and thank you for listening.